is Vincent with the Best in Movie Show. I'm here with Susanna Lee. How are you today? Good, good. How's the convention treating you this weekend? I love the convention. Um, it's lovely seeing fans again. They they come from uh, all over the place, and they they they're very supportive. And uh, I did very well. Sold all my books and photographs, mostly. Now you're from Belgrave, England, right? Uh, I'm from uh, Belgravia. Yes. Is that where you live now? No, I live in Winter Garden, which is in Florida. Oh, so you don't live far from here? No, no, I don't. I'm local. I gotta ask you, um, how was it working with Elvis? Oh, wow. I was a big Elvis fan, still am, and uh, Elvis and I were both under contract to Hal Wallace, so we were both contract stars, so uh, it was fabulous, because Elvis was such a lovely guy. Everything you ever heard about Elvis is true. I mean, the nice things, anyway. Well, I got a, I got a thing on here I looked up last night about Easy Come, Easy Go, about how that uh, his manager, Tom Parker, didn't want you to, to be in the movie with him. Well, um, yes, and no. Well, yes, that's true. Um, but also, um, Charlton Heston at the time was the head of the Screen Actors Guild, and um, just a few months before that, um, uh, he'd been turned down to play Gordon of Khartoum in England. So his line was, the next limey, that's what we were called, the Brits, we were called limeys in the old days, that walks in the door and wants, uh, uh, you know, to be able to work as an American, will I'll put a big no. Well, my big movie, which was going to make me into a major store, was um, Barefoot in the Park. So Barefoot in the Park and an Elvis movie and another movie all on the same day. And he went, no, no, no. So it was basically uh, Charlton Heston. Now, you did a TV series uh, called uh, um, Chiffy Kids. Is that, am I saying it right? Um, I, I, was just wondering, I did a series, television series called Twice and Twelve, French series, Three Stars. Well, after that, in 19, 19, it was at 1978, though, you took a, a really long break from making movies. Yeah, um, I did. I had a, a car crash uh, in 76, and um, so that was, that was a long haul. I smashed my hip and pelvis and stuff. So that was a long haul. And then, uh, you know, I was in love with a difficult man. I think that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. And he didn't like me in the business, so I came out for a long time. And then you got a movie coming out right now called Gra The Grace of Faith? Grace of the Father. Grace of the Father. Thank you, darling. Yes, I have. And I've just finished my second book. Uh, What's that about? It's, actually, it's about the eight years I lived in Memphis and what extraordinary things happened. And that's been looked at at the moment to be made into a movie. So that's exciting in Hollywood. i got to ask you, what do you think about the Oscars and all the, all the controversy going on where, you know, some of the white people and some of the black people are not, you know, and how... They're saying that they're not giving the black folks more, um, you, you know what I mean? Yes. Well, of course, uh, you know, that's all getting a bit silly uh, in my mind because uh, it's way out of proportion because if somebody's really good for a long, long time, it doesn't matter if you're black, orange, purple or mauve, you get the award on the whole. And we're all the same here. Absolutely. In this business, we are. And for a lot of... Um, people of color who are actually saying that they're not out there enough is not fair because we don't I mean we don't have black awards do we I'm not sure no. well I mean you, you, no. I don't I know I think it's all gone totally out of, out of control. well there is a BET award which is all black yes I no. know but we don't well that's it so that's fine isn't it you know well I mean and, and I, I hate how they bring that card in like oh this yes. is because at the end of the day right. you're just as equal as I am as equal as he is yeah and that's that's been proved many many times I mean uh, my my godmother was Vivian Lee and she made Gone with the Wind and uh, it started way back there and I can't remember forgive me the uh, girl who one of the first black people that won a, uh, an Academy Award for that. And your career st stretches way, way back. I mean, you've been in some lovely pieces and some very good films. Strange one. <laughs> what would you say if nobody's seen a film of yours? Uh, would you? What would you say? The Lust of the Vampire. Um, what would you say would be a movie they have to see? 
Uh, well, I think really, because it was so lovely working with Tony Curtis, I worked with him twice. I think he would have to see Boeing Boeing with Tony Curtis and Jerry Lewis and Thelma Ritter, one of the greatest maids of ever time, you know. That was a lovely movie to make because I loved working with Tony. Of course, Jerry Lewis was a jerk, still is, and of course will always be, maybe. What's the last film you've seen in theaters? Uh, in the theaters, I saw a faith-based movie last year, funny enough, by the same uh, director that I did this movie with. So. <clears throat> um, on set, anything or out of the ordinary has happened in any of your movies that you can remember that that one sticks out more than the other? Yes, when I was very successful in, in Hollywood, I used to ask people, uh, big stars, to give me uh, hints on you know, what would help my career. And, um, uh, but Lancaster gave me some advice that actually saved my life when I made The Deadly Bees. Um, he told me never, never work with fire without having a safety hatch, you know. So when I was working on the Deadly Bees, the end of the Deadly Bees, the whole set goes up. Well, I mean, basically not the whole set, it's supposed to be just that scene. And um, so I said, no, I, I, I must have a, an escape route. And this, they gave me all this business about, you don't need one. I've been working in this business for a thousand years. We've got it all under control. There's no problem. You're just being a drama queen. I said, no, I'm not doing the scene without one. Because I remember distinctly him telling me that. And sure enough, the damn thing couldn't turn off. <laughs> the stuff kept blowing, and the whole set did, and half the studio went up. That, well, that one big lot. So yes, I, uh, I, I remember that distinctly. And I always used to, I was the only person on that movie, The Deadly Bees, that didn't get stung. I used to have a dressing room next to two million Australian bees. And um, I used to look in every morning, I'd say, morning boys. <laughs> Who inspired you growing up as an actress or actor that made you want to do films and become in this business? Well, I suppose when I, well, I was totally in love with my godmother, Vivian Lee, you know, and uh, so I went to her and asked advice from her when I was 11 and asked her if I could use my, her name. And so my name is Susanna Lee because of Vivian. And, uh, but I mean, you know, so it was her and uh, she became my mentor, which is terribly important, you know. And um, Deborah Kerr and all sorts of people like that. And of course, um, Casablanca was hugely... It's a great film, isn't it? It's a fabulous movie. And, um, you know, there are certain movies that you see time and time again, and you forget you've seen them once you get into watching it. What know? about the birds? Did you like the birds? Oh, I love, well, of course, um, Tippi Hedren. I love working with Tippi because I made a, f a film with Tippi. I just did an interview with Tippi uh, not too long ago. Very, very pleasant lady. Oh, she's gorgeous. She's such a sweetheart. And she and she does this rescue thing with animals. She loves animals. Oh, yeah, so do I. I rescue dogs and cats, but I mean, at the moment, it's only dogs <laughs> all from the streets. But she rescues big cats, and she's got these fabulous big cats. i got to tell you something, though. I... I just moved into a new place with my girlfriend, and I bought a uh, Great Dane about two months ago. It's a Great Dane slash German Shepherd. Oh, well, that, maybe you've got a good job. The reason being, when I was little, I had a great, uh, my family had a Great Dane, and I had to tell you, if it was just a Great Dane, I would say very little, because I love them, but they don't live very long. But because you've got a mix, you've got a good chance. Well, you know what? And I didn't know they were going to be so big. And she's only four months, and her paws are as big as my hands. Yes, yeah, but the Great Dane will come up to here. I used to ride the Great Dane when I was little, because I was only four. So I went on vacation, and I went and got some pet food, and I saw a uh, boxer, a two-year-old boxer. Right. It's about this small, and it just... Uh, two months, sorry. And uh, me and my son, we just fell in love with it, and we had to adopt it. We had to adopt it. Yes. My daughter loves boxes, and she has boxes, and, and she also has... Um, uh, Boston Terriers. One more question. Uh, what do you think the difference between acting here in America is and compared to acting overseas in London and different cities over there? 
Well, of course, um, not that much really. It's just the accents, don't forget. You know, it's not really that much difference. And of course, now it's so different to how it was in the old days. Now you just keep on going with all these cameras everywhere. And and in the old days, it was so expensive film. So you had to know your lines completely, and then you cut, as you know, and all that. And it was horrendous. If, uh, but now you just keep on going, keep on going. And uh, it's amazing. So you get that all over the world. So it's not that much different now. Have you lived in Hollywood? Oh, yes, of course, in the 60s when I was under contract to Paramount. Now, do you think you think now is worse with paparazzis than it was in the 60s? Well, of course now it is, yes, because now they, uh, there is no, it's, there's no bars, there's no, there's no stopping point. And they, of course, it started, I think, with the intrusion game, started really big time with, and I suffered from it quite a bit, was in the uh, late 70s, 80s with the long lenses. Uh, so then you started to realize that you really couldn't go anywhere uh, uh, safely. And then uh, I think they took another level when they only published bad photographs. You know, this is what you look like now. No, that's a really bad photograph, that's all. I don't look like that. But so I realized very, uh, you know, so it went progression, you know. I mean, in the way back when my godmother Vivian Lee was a big star, of course you had the security of your studio if you were under contract to a studio. And I was very lucky, I was on the bridge of the end of that. So when I was under contract to um, Paramount, I was told that I had the security of Paramount around me. And um, in fact, I was the last person to sign the big contracts with Paramount. So oh. they had that group to look after me. If anything I did, I came in the door, it would be taken care of. But that doesn't happen, of course, anymore. But uh, no, and you could, uh, your, stu your uh, PR, your press, put out what they wanted, you know, and they covered you. But now uh, it, it is very intrusive. But at the same time, a lot of, um, because of this reality um, shows, being reality shows and stuff like that, so big, and people uh, have taken that on as part of what the culture now that uh, they like to see or is acceptable to see people in various stages of their day. Now, do you care about that or not really? What, reality? Yeah, reality. I mean, are you hooked on, I mean, do you watch it? No, no I can't really. <laughs> well, I gotta say, you know, yesterday when I was coming by here, I have to say, you look like a very lovely lady, very, and you look like you would have a lot of information and you would be a great person to talk to because there's not a lot of people out there that tell you about the 60s and the 50s and have lived it and that's what I like I like people that are truthful and tell you how it is well that's what I always put in my book on the front of my book called Paradise Susanna style at the front of it I put warning this is not a novel so I don't have to deal with any issues in my next book where can they find anything about you your books or a website yes. anything okay well if you go on uh, Amazon uh, and it's uh, Paradise Susanna style or if you want it signed for me, then you go on um, the Susanna Lee and you can just pay through PayPal and I'll be happy to send you a copy. Very good. I want to thank you for your time and uh, hope you have a rest of a good day. Thank you very much, Danny. It was great about your great day.